Stop, this is weird. Do you want me to this case? Uh, yes, the front lights, please. Can I move this over? Okay. I just took a magnet off. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. This one fell too. Okay, we're going to get started. Everyone look up front, please. So today we're going to do Becoming an Effective Teacher Part 3. So in addition to all of the past lessons in the past two classes at least, I miss Christensen. Okay, we're going to do our agenda and objectives. So who wants to read our agenda? Okay, who wants to read our objectives? Go ahead. Identify learner-centered strategies. Oh, I can. Sorry. Identify learner-centered strategies. Thank you. Strategies. Yeah. Any questions? We'll get to all of this later, but any questions on objectives or anything? Okay. I know. Okay, so we're going to start off with a little activity. So just on the back of your two stars and a wish, you're going to play tic-tac-toe three times with your partner and really pay attention to like what strategies both of you use so go ahead and if you don't have a partner you can join lucy okay. Stop it. That was right. You know what? Okay, is everyone finished or is anyone still working? You guys are still working real quick? Okay, talk amongst yourselves. What happens if it's a tie because I'm showing this to you? That's fine, even if all of them are ties. Just do it three times. Then you both lose. You suck. Okay, did you guys finish up? Okay, um, and then just as a reminder, your informal assessment today is just to participate once. Okay, let's discuss some strategies that people use. <laughs> so, does anyone want to share what strategy they used or their partner used? Yeah, go ahead. Both of us always ended up going in the middle of that first room. That's a good strategy. 
either of us did the like where no matter what they do, there's always two places where you can win, mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter where they place. So did that one end up in a tie because no, you both I did it? No, I won Oh, actually, she unintentionally did it on the third one and didn't realize didn't she had realize. done it. I yeah. was like, you're gonna win. But I, I was the winner. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, <laughs> raise your hand if you won in your partnership. Just kidding. But I have, can I say a thing about it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. She's so like, oh. for ours, um, Kylie just let me win twice. Kylie. She said that it's just, so she said, I'd rather someone win. Like, it's more interesting if someone wins. That's true. She, like, lost purposely twice. <laughs> so that, like, because, you know, if your second move is the middle one, like, no one ever wins. It's always a draw. Mm -hmm. And, yep. Oh, I see what you mean. Like, you didn't just give up, but you just did the purposely the like square. went for one that would then allow me. Yeah. To win. So you didn't really. Win. I didn't. You win. won by default. Yeah. Okay. The only purpose of this activity was just to look that there's different strategies to everything because today we're gonna learn about learner-centered strategies. So a lot of the ways that people play tic-tac-toe usually is to focus on like their part, their opponent's move. So whatever their opponent does, then they like react best the next game. So your second game, you probably did something different because of what your opponent did the first game. So that's just like teaching. You're gonna want to like, throughout the year, learn throughout, um, learn how your students learn best and the way to help them facilitate their own learning rather than just you teaching them. So this is just a question that we're gonna quickly discuss with partners. It's, there's no right answer or wrong answer. Um, someone wanna read this for us? What do you think is the best strategy of teaching? So just discuss it with your partner. <coughs> <coughs> well, like, there's no the best strategy of teaching is the one that optimizes the circle. Well, because she's just talking about it. It's not like it's like the best strategy of teaching. It's like the best strategy of teaching. Yeah, like being in the best strategy. Because if you do a bunch of things, what do you think is I mean, you could, but I like looking at it. It depends. Yeah, actually, like the way we do that. But like some people might not. Yeah. Yeah. But she also does her own. Okay, we're going to bring it back. It sounds like most of you are done with the question. Um, so we're not going to discuss this one as a class. This is just something to get you thinking because there is no one right way to learn. That's um, going to be different for every single teacher or every person. So we're not really going to discuss this one too much. It was just to get you started for the lesson. So the first one we're going to go over, we're going to do a little bit of boring stuff and then we'll go into more fun stuff just because you're paying attention more at the beginning because that's how it always works. Um, so does someone want to read for us? Okay, you already read. Hold on. <laughs> Love you, but you already read. Actually, we need, you can read the short part and then Oakley can read the longer part. So just the top highlighted one. Oh, okay. Is alert, oh, just kidding. Biden? <laughs> you didn't read the bold part. Okay, got it. I can read. Um, guided discovery is a learner-centered instructional strategy that involves teachers providing students with information and then guiding students to an understanding of concepts and generalizations. Okay, we're going to read a little situation about Lori. Lori. Yeah, so just what? that, and then it goes on to the back page right here. It's kind of long. You can yeah. split it no, with right. someone else if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lori begins by saying, okay, everyone, reach down and grab your leg. Squeeze it and tell us what you feel. Isabella? Sorry. I'm actually doing this. 
we can students like, know that their legs feel soft and warm and that a bone is inside them. <laughs> Actually true. Oh god. god. Like, Lori <laughs> has them explain their observations with questions such as, what do you feel inside your legs and why do they feel warm? <laughs> Wait, what grade does she teach? <laughs> does not specify. <laughs> I'm guessing it is elementary, elementary school yes. because of what it ends and stuff, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, in addition to drawing students into the lesson, oh, like, okay. <laughs> These observations and questions also establish differences between mammals and ant ar arthropods, which are cold-blooded and have exoskeletons. Lori then brings a live lobster out of a cooler, what? a cricket in a baggie, and yeah. a crayfish, and passes them around so students can observe and What's touch the them. In? Is it loose? With each, she has them compare the arthropods outer coverings with their own skin and they conclude that each of the examples have a hard outer covering. Good, Lori responds as she next displays a colored picture of the cricket and crayfish on her document camera for the children and asks them to compare the legs on these animals to theirs. She continues, now look at all three of these animals. What is something they all have in common? Sergio, they all felt hard. And what does that tell us? Their skeletons are on the outside. <laughs> keep going, keep going. I've been thinking for several seconds. Well done, Sergio. You've identified one of the important features of these animals. What else did we find that was similar about the animals? Ava? They all felt cold. Excellent, Ava. How is that different from the way we feel? Ethan? We feel warm. We're warm-blooded, David concludes excitedly. These animals are cold-blooded. <laughs> yes, that's outstanding thinking, Ethan. Lori responds with a smile and a wave of her hand. Lori continues to direct students' analysis of the lobster, cricket, and crayfish, comparing them to their own bodies, having them identify the jointed legs in each of the animals, and having them identify the segmented bodies in each. Let's see how Lori wraps up the lesson. Now, let's look at the patterns we found in the animal, Lori directs. What do they have in common, Christy? They're all cold-blooded. Yes, excellent. That's one common feature of these animals. And with that, she writes cold-blooded on the whiteboard. What else do they have in common, Robert? Skeleton on the outside, Robert replies quickly. Good, Robert, that's another important feature, she writes. Uh, outside skeleton on the board on her list of characteristics. Kirsty, their legs are jointed. Good. Jason, they have segmented bodies. Outstanding, everyone. You've identified all the important features of this group of animals. Now, does anyone know the name of this animal group? After hearing no responses, Lori says, we call these animals arthropods. Everybody say that word now. The students then respond in unison, arthropods. Lori then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lori then quickly writes the word on the board and says, now, give me a definition of arthropods. I'll let someone volunteer. With some prompting, they define arthropods as animals that have an outside skeleton, jointed legs, and segmented bodies, and are cold-blooded. Lori extends the lesson by showing the students a, a clam, a worm, a grasshopper, and even Ms. Mrs. Ramirez, the parent volunteer, asking them to tell her if they are arthropods and explain why or why not. <laughs> what a lesson. Is that the end? Yeah. It was like showing them this, this, and Mrs. Ramirez. Yeah, I was like, yeah. <laughs> okay, I know that one was kind of long, but this one's a little difficult to do in class just because she uses real life examples to try and explain a concept. Um, we're going to do some activities with the other ones, but basically, what did you guys notice about like what Lori did with her teaching style in that? It's called backwards design. She had the kids figure, she gave them a thing. Mm -hmm. So that's basically, go ahead. I was just going to say, I feel like that kind of happens in science. Like they just throw a random like experiment at you and you're like, what the freak? And you like <laughs> make a conclusion. But then I feel like the fault there is that they never tell you if you got the right answer. True. Mm -hmm. You're just talking about physics yeah, here. Well, <laughs> good luck. Yeah. But yeah, making conclusions. I don't know, they just like start with like an example of like a real life thing. Yeah. Um, so basically that's what guided discovery is. It's more just giving the students information and allowing them to come to their own principles and conclusions. So instead of Lori just saying like, this is what arthropods are and giving them a definition, she helped them come to their own definition so that they like understand it better. And it's a lot, it sticks in their memory a lot better when it means something to them. So after that lesson, the kids are going to now know what arthropods is just because they learned from all the different things that she brought in and were able to touch it in hands on 
everything like that. So just handing them information and letting them come to the definition and conclusion. So that was the boring part. Okay, so now we're going to do flipped instruction. It's basically a flipped classroom, and we're just going to do a little simulation, like pretending you're at home doing it. So I know Miss Gagan teaches this way in math, the flipped classroom where you learn at home and then you do the work in class. So we're going to do a little simulation of it because this is another one of the strategies. Um, so Ains, you want to pass these out? Just pass one out to everyone. Okay, I'm going to explain kind of what's going to happen. So during this, I will pause it and what you because you might need it. We're going to do origami, so it might be a little bit of like uh, we need to pause it a lot. So you can work at your own pace just like a flipped classroom when you're at home. You can make sure that you go slow enough for yourself. The only problem is you might not be able to go fast if you're ahead, but I cannot help you with any of the steps because in a flipped classroom, you're not going to have a teacher. Afterwards, we can talk over it and stuff like you would in class after a flipped classroom, but just for this part, the only thing I'm going to be able to do is stop it and start it or rewind it if you guys need, but I can't help you with the steps. You can whisper to your partner, uh, AKA text or call your partner. That's what you would do at home if you need help with like the lesson, but I can't help you on it. Oh, also we're making like little heart letter things in light of Mother's Day. So if you want to give it to your mom or to any other guardian that you have or to like a boyfriend or girlfriend because it's a little heart, it's cute, then feel free, it's a little festive. <laughs> It's it's not it's a simple one. Okay, is everyone ready? You got your papers ready? Okay. Yeah, I already have folded this part though, so just there you go. No, it does not. You can just yell out if you need it to be paused at any point. white paper and it was just as hard so <laughs> this is where it gets a little complicated <laughs> that's what it should look like good You don't, you don't need a pencil. They just do it for extra. It's just to fold the corner in. you can, but I would not recommend. Huh? Ains Richards. Oh, wait, did we just flip it over? <laughs> no, we didn't. No, we did uh, oh, what's 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 oh, what's that. Oh, go back, go back, go back. Go back. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Oh, what's, what's the point? Okay. 
You have to have the food. Ooh, what? I can't um, do that. Me neither. Yeah, I don't oh, think oh, so. Oh, I see. Oh, wait, no. I'll go back about five seconds so you can see how they folded it. Here's how they folded it if you're missing it. They'll do all the corners, so you can keep watching oh, them do it multiple times. So I just look at the other side. Oh, oh, this is, they'll have yield for this. <laughs> <laughs> they'll lose their eyes. Oh. They don't have to touch. They don't have to touch. Mine has a huge gap. So does no, mine. It doesn't matter. It's okay. Mine are kind of touchy. <laughs> Half of mine's not even the touch. Oh, mine are touching too. Cuties. <laughs> yeah. It's already got stuff for me. This guy's is impressive, dude. I know. It just goes kind of fast. It's not too yeah, hard once you do it. So. I was going to do a dinosaur, but it was way too hard. <laughs> I tried to make the dinosaur, and it did not work. So. Did you make one of these? Yeah, I did. I was going to bring it in, but I did not. I do random stuff. I, like, start drawing. I'm like, I can't. I can't. I can't. I'll start going on are we all caught up or do we need a second more? Okay, we're starting, so everyone be ready. Not the top, no. Oh, the top is not the same. Oh, no. This is how dare he take You'll end up folding it kind of like that anyway, so it's okay if you do. Pull back again. Oh, what the? Oh, yeah. I get it. Okay, I get it. This is very bad. Oh, when I was trying to do the videos at home, I was like, how do people do this? Same thing on the other side. Oh, are we getting a heart or a flower? A heart. Oh, girl. It's like a little surprise. You didn't know what it was going to look like. Oh, you I told, you told us. It was a I told us. We didn't know what it was going to look like. I told us. I told us. I said that. I told, I told you guys. <laughs> See, now the music's all happy. Wait, I could have made such a 
Yeah, yeah that's the flower. Like, I mean, heart. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I'm I have made a heart. Go ahead. So it's easier than Yeah, that. I, I mean, don't know how to get there so fast. Move your little guy or, like, move the table. Just stand me at the ground. It's, well, like, it's not at your face. It's so much on your face. Or if you don't care, I'm not. There you go. There you go. Oh, it's joking. Sorry. <laughs> They made a fold. Oh, they made a fold into the middle. Yeah. Oh. So it's like, wow. I kind of like the middle fold. I have a video of you guys. I can do it. 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 I can Oh, you can put a little note in the middle. Wait, Sid, mine turned out so good. <gasps> mine Guys, they look cute. Cute. You that would have to go on. Right? Okay, I'll give you guys just a couple minutes if you want to write a little note inside. But only like two minutes. What did you say about I'm mad. I'm mad. Also, now in the simulation, we're back in class. So, if you need help with your heart, I can help you now. Oh. <laughs> How do you help this? It looks good. Uh, it looks good. At least you don't have a broken one. Oh, I got yeah, I worked mine at the beginning. Ready? No, that, that one looks really good. That's cute. She really does. A broken heart with a <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> what? It's a scripture. Is that actually? Yeah, broken heart and spirit. In several scriptures. You got us some pieces. I feel like I know that from somewhere, but I don't know. I thought I was just like a happy down picture. It's like a parade with that. Yeah, we were both 2005 grade 4 teams, and I'm like, what? Oh, literally, like, it was so random. It was like, I like 
your car from the guy with the same car before. I was like, yeah. Yeah. So I know who you are. Stop, that's so nerdy. Did you find his name? No, there wasn't a name. I love Carolyn's name. You're in. No number? I like your car. I like your car. I have the same one. Okay, so it was like eight other people. Alexis? Oh, like, like, <laughs> like, I don't think I was supposed to tell you that as a teacher. Where did you go? You look very concerned. Okay, we're going to come back to flipped instruction. So we're going to do just a short discussion about the activity slash simulation. But first of all, raise your hand if you've ever done flipped classroom before, like in a class. Okay, so about about half of you. How did you guys like it? Like, what was your experience? I really did not like it, and it was an AP class. Oh. And so it was like AP World History with Ferroni, and I'm sorry because I know your besties with Ferroni. <laughs> we don't just, say names. Okay. Okay. They sorry, say feedback. sorry. I mean, it was with well, some know. other teacher in the North Hall who teaches AP World History, <laughs> and I just didn't like it. Like, it was like we bought the textbook, and it was like, you had to read through everything in the textbook at home, oh. and then the stuff that you did in class was just like assignments, like um, like like worksheets, like, like I don't yeah, know, just like silly things. Like honestly, it felt like something I would do in middle school, and I just like started not reading the chapters nearly as much and just skimmed them, and then like I still passed the class, but like didn't do good on my my AP test that year. Oh like, yeah, it was just a bummer. And then yeah. I didn't take A push the next year, so I think like honestly, if like it wasn't that way, I might have like taken another. AP. Yeah. Ours was, I don't think ours was that way. We were supposed to read the only did that one year. Oh, well, then she didn't like it either. Yeah. So, but that was like pretty much. Kylene, did you say you did it? <laughs> yeah. I don't think it was the same thing we did the next year. We just read some textbook at home in the same time. But we had notes. That's true. Kylene, did you say you've done a flipped classroom? What was your experience? Uh, I hated it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I shouldn't say. But. I yeah, I just hated it. It sucked. I felt like I never actually learned anything, mm -hmm. and I didn't like Ooh. the teacher anyway because she argued with me on how to pronounce my own name. So just a <laughs> bad experience. <laughs> Bro, I yeah, go ahead again. I think that um, <laughs> the like one of the reasons why I don't like flipped classrooms is because like you're in that classroom with the teacher, and if you're doing things that like seem like they should be homework, and you're doing it at school, but then you're learning everything that should be done at school while like at home. You, yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it doesn't strengthen your relationship with the teacher nearly as much, and I just feel like they could be doing their job so much better. Yeah. Because I think like, the, yeah, it's not like, like Miss Lewis's sophomore class was so awesome because she does like, she does like so many different activities and stuff and like tying things into the books we're reading and it's like yeah. she's present in her class like she wants to be there it's like heavily a discussion it's like yeah. and it's like it's like she like, like she's here. yeah I know it's almost like no I'm just kidding. she yeah. like gives you feedback and she like keeps it going but I feel like those teachers are kind of just like I'm over here if you need questions like like which is nice because it's like so learning to do things on your own but it's like I want to be here and learn from you and like mm -hmm. share knowledge with your, you and not just be like okay I'll be over here yeah yeah, Emily? I think, I just feel like flipped instruction is kind of like making the students teach themselves, but the whole point of having yeah. a teacher is to teach you yeah. new stuff, and homework is supposed to be done at home, uh -huh. or if you have extra time in class. I just feel like it doesn't work as well. My brother did it for one year in his math class, and he said it didn't work at all, and it was super hard. Yeah. It just didn't make sense. He couldn't ask questions to the teacher, 
until the next day. Yeah, I feel like the ideal flipped classroom is where a teacher is actually present, but you still learn it yourself at home. So they can still, I had a teacher where I did flip classroom who kind of would almost reteach the lesson if you needed it, but if you didn't need it, you could work on your homework. So that was really nice because you almost got two lessons if you didn't understand something and you got it in a different way. The yeah. concept of flipped classroom though is like let you do the stuff that is easier on your own and then work on, like do the stuff that's the hard, application. Like you have questions or you might struggle with with the teacher. So I did still do that, like having you guys read at home like a lot instead of reading in the classroom is like a type of flipped classroom. Like we spent our time doing the things that would be harder or yeah. that required other people or discussion or things like that. So. I've never done a full flipped classroom, but sometimes I'll, I'll do stuff like that. But like, this is the easier part, so you do that at home. We'll do the harder part yeah. here together. But yeah, that was a good... Different. Like you're not I do yourself a whole but new But wasn't Fred reading the textbook at home? Yeah, so that was like... And then you do the activities so in class? I think yours is like flipped, flipped classroom. So yours is like classroom. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love that part of the story to figure out when it's origami. Because <laughs> Oren would tell us to go read at home, and then we'd get to the next class and be like, all right, so basically what you guys read is, and then we'd explain the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I'm just going to listen to the beginning of class. Yeah. Yeah, like that was a good introduction yeah, to just kind of say that you can have certain classes, like, periods where you do flipped classroom instead of an entire flipped classroom like you might have your students learn something new at home and then you do an application at class they talked a lot about that in the textbook how you can do applications in class of the concepts of real world things which are a little bit harder like in math usually just learning the general concepts is pretty easy but then once you start to apply it to problems it's harder to do it in class so that's more of the concept of trying to do the application of the actual principles while you're in class rather than trying to figure it out and not knowing the right answer when you're at home because that happens a lot. Even science, like if you're doing your lab report at home and you submit it and then they still don't give you feedback if it's right or not, then you have no idea. So I feel like the teacher has to be there to be telling you that was correct or that was incorrect and this is why and explain and talk through it with you. It does depend on the text, mm -hmm. right? Like Frankenstein, I don't have kids read almost any at home because they just don't like it generally well at home. Yeah. Yeah. So for this pair of at home. yeah, and you need to kind of be discussing as you go along to see all the cool things that are happening, like the science that she pulls in, the philosophy uh -huh. and stuff like that. So I don't have kids read that as much at home, whereas like all but my life, kids tend to like better yeah. than the text, and it's not difficult reading, right? Like it is, it's, it's heavy, but the book itself is really easy to read, yeah. and that one, I barely have to give them guidance at all to read at home, and mm -hmm. yeah, because they'll just like bust be grateful for through the skirt it I got um, an orange for her birthday. She did, and I should have been grateful for that orange I got for Christmas. Yeah. I did eat she it, I did enjoy it, it was lovely. So oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Lucy, go ahead. I was just going to say, in English, we read Our Eyes Are Watching God, and it's kind of like a, like, we listened to, like, the audio, so, like, you could read it a little easier, just because of, like, the accent or whatever. But some of the stuff, it was, like, the questions we had to answer were, like, what's the symbolism of this? Which, like, obviously, like, your class is heavily, like, on symbolism, but, like, some people, like myself, kind of struggle with symbolism. Like, I don't, I'm not very creative or have, like, that yeah, background information. Yeah. So I'm like trying to like figure it out um, like on my own at home and it's just not the same. Especially when teachers are looking for a specific symbol. I yeah. feel like sometimes symbolism can be like, there's yeah, so many different so things you can tie in, but she is looking for one thing. And if you don't say it, then you get it wrong. Like you don't get the points for it. So I feel like in those certain situations, you have to do that in class. It's not yeah. like an at home thing. Well, especially yeah. you can have your own yeah. Okay. Then we're just going to go through what are the general negative aspects of flipped class instruction? I feel like we kind of talked about this a little bit, just right. generally, though. Different things. Yeah. Different things. Different things. Different things. Different It can see me. Okay. What are the general negative aspects? We already kind of touched on it, but just generally. If you learn it wrong, and then you come to school trying to apply what you thought you learned, yeah. and then it's completely wrong, then you're just like, ah, yeah. What, what if you teach yourself mm -hmm. the completely like, the opposite? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You learned it a wrong way. Uh, it's hard yeah. to relearn. Yeah. It totally is. Yeah, Lucy. Or some kids, they just go to school, go home, and that's all they do with school is just go. You know, like that's mm -hmm. the, their only yeah. effort. Yeah. And so there's some kids who literally don't do homework. So if that's their homework is to learn the lesson, they're not going to do it and they're not going to learn. Yeah. So it's like. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we talked a lot about negatives. So let's just go on to some positive aspects of flipped instruction. Yeah, it's like you could save time if like if it's done right. If students learn, sorry, I can't see you. If students learn um, at home, then it gives more time for you to like learn other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else for positives of flipped instruction? Seems like generally students don't love flipped instruction. The idea it's is there. Is. It's just we're so used to yeah. one way that it's like learning. And well, when you do a full class fully, of it, it's yeah. a lot. Because mm -hmm. I personally, math, I was in. I didn't hate flipped classroom. I, it was a lot of work to try and watch videos at home and take notes and stuff just because you had you for sure had homework every single night when it wasn't like an AP class. But otherwise, I feel like we learned it pretty well just because we could ask in class. But, I feel like yeah. one thing about flipped classrooms now is that like it reminds me of when we ha were online for yeah. COVID just because it was like, yeah, the teachers so. were like doing recorded lectures, but you were at home by yourself and like learning and like, doing homework. Exactly, and so it's like, when teachers like still continue that now, I feel like, oh, I feel like they should take like um, advantage or like appreciation of the fact that they have students in their class yeah. teaching. Presently. It's almost like a negative stigma just because of all of the COVID things that everyone went through and doing that every day, all day. That was a little much. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on to a more fun activity because we talked about that for a while. Um, so we're going to talk about cooperative learning. This is another uh, aspect and we're gonna do two activities for this one so we're just gonna split you guys in half so it looks like five perfect we're just gonna split right down the middle if you guys want to put your desks together just flip these and then Natalie you can join and then just flip your desks and then you can join so for this we're gonna do a little competition because in cooperative learning you always just have one goal that you're all working towards one sec gotta grab these Okay, you guys are going to be group one and you guys are going to be group two. So for cooperative learning, we're just going to do a little exercise that you all have one similar goal that you're getting to and you help each other get to that goal. So for the first one, we're going to do a little puzzle and you guys, whoever gets it fastest will get a point and then whoever gets the point at the end will get to pick what ice cream they want first. So you're going to want to try and win. We have a couple of activities, so it's not just the puzzle. Okay. Are you guys ready? No. No? no okay, yeah, make your little setup wherever you want to do it. And I'm not telling you what the picture is, so you just have to figure it out. It's the same, it's the same exact one, though, so you, there's no bias. You guys ready? You know why you're doing it? No? Yes? Yes? Okay, ready, set, go. That's the point. It's a lot harder. They're focused on theirs. Oh, they're get. They're getting somewhere over here. You're not helping. I am helping. I was talking about you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell them. Yeah. It's fine. I'm just the commentator, guys. Oh, oh, it's right here. It's right here. It's, it's small. We have the whole box. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Wait, no. No. No, no. <gasps> it's getting close. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. We're done. done. They got it. They got no. it. Ah! Yeah, we got to make sure. Okay, good, 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 good. That was really close. It's a dinosaur if you guys didn't get that. Okay. Team one got a point. Okay, this one is going to be a little harder, so go ahead and put your puzzle pieces back in the baggie. Do you care if we move your desks a little bit? Okay. Okay. Um, hold on, we'll let you put your puzzle pieces back first. We're done with the first. 
Okay. So for this one, for each round, you're going to have to have one person sit out just because you guys have one more person. Okay, so that'll give you a disadvantage. Okay, so um, let's move. Let's see. Okay, um, let's move these desks, just these four in towards there, towards your guys's, and then these four in. So just move these four inwards. These four desks, we're just moving in so that you have more space and we're going to work on the side right there. Like, so just, it doesn't matter, just out of the way. Oh, oh. oh let's just for space right here. Are you standing up? This yes, you are standing up. I figured we need a little movement. I've been sitting down the whole time, so. Okay, yes. so this is going to be your guys' area, a.k.a. line. And then this is going to be your guys' area, a.k.a. you're going to be in a line. Okay. Okay, this one's a practice, so no one's going to get a point. This is just an easy one. So for this activity, you cannot talk to each other at all. So you can't say any, any words. So for just this first one, it's just going to be a practice. So line up by height without talking. Shortest to tallest? Or? Shortest to tallest. No talking to each other at all. Mm. Okay, yeah, they, they're done. <laughs> I can't help you guys. You I told you that's a practice. No points. Uh, I always lose practices. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Practice okay. Yep, yep, okay, good job, guys. There's that first one. So that was just a practice. These other ones are going to be a lot harder. They're not going to be sight things. But you're going to have to find a way. You cannot do sign language. Listen to the rules real quick. You cannot do sign language or any type of mouthing or hand motion. And you cannot write anything down. So you can't use a marker or write on the board. Have you thought through? There's no other yes, way. no, there's a way. I know a way. There's multiple ways. You just have to figure it out. So, okay. Uh, Hey, uh-uh, no talking, no talking. Okay, so this next one, we're going to go, okay, listen up, listen up. We're, are you ready? Okay, and if you get it wrong, the other team automatically gets a point. If you say you are done, so right now designate someone to be the okay person, like to okay that you're done. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, one sec. So once you guys are done and your team knows you're done, give me a thumbs up from that person. Okay? Got it? I know. Okay, so no sign language, no mouthing anything or like motions of any sort, and no writing anything down. So you can't write on anything. No, no hand signals. You can like point where people to go, but you can't like, no, I'm saying like, any sort of sign language that's not real sign language. Like you, you know what I mean? Like you, like, like you can't like write out letters. Like, what if I do like with your hands? You can do that if like you want. numbers. You can do numbers. Okay. I'll vote numbers. Okay. So this next one, you're going to go alphabetical by middle name. And if you don't have a middle name, you go by your last name. So this, you're going to have to try and figure out a way to do it. There's no sign language. You can't write anything. I would look at the other group. It might be easier. <laughs> what? Is that allowed? You can do I didn't say you can't. Okay, which side did you start from? Okay, middle name letter. And no E. Just say A. Oh. No, 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 no! Mine is also Anne. <laughs> yeah, Anne uh, with an E. <laughs> okay, okay. Blair Sullivan. Okay, they got a point. <laughs> Let's just see if your guys has got it right. Okay, where'd you start from? Okay. Okay. Michelle. Sage. Okay. Okay, team two, you got a point. Good job, guys.
That's you. Okay, ready? Okay, for this one, you cannot use numbers. There is no numbers, so do not use it on your finger. No, I said you could point to where people go and point. We said people go, but they were pointing the letters. Okay, this time, no pointing to numbers, no using numbers on your finger, and no talking or mouthing or anything like that, okay? No pointing the number, the letters. This is the last round, by the way. This is the last one we're going to do with this one. From the first thing, the puzzle. No, okay, ready? This one you're going to get in line by the number of kid you are in your family. But no hand motions and no mouthing, so go ahead. <laughs> no humming things. <laughs> Okay, ready? Oldest. Oldest. Second. Third. They got a point! I, have no oh, I didn't understand oh, the question. I didn't understand the question. I oh. thought it was number of siblings Lucy. you have. So I said two. Well, that oh, is no. listening skills, sis. I was the oldest. That's that is listening. You. <laughs> what? Oh, I was like, how are we supposed to know how many siblings you Okay, do you guys, have? you guys explain your strategy, oldest. what you guys so, did. So we started with saying how many we have. Yeah, so I was like, Carson went Lucy didn't even know what you were doing. I thought you were doing younger children. No, I was like, I know this is the youngest I will. So I was like, you go there, I'll go over here. But then at the end, she said, I'm like, we both have a sister. Like, this too. Okay, go ahead and actually, okay, you guys can pick what you want, and then you guys can pick second. Okay, so we have, okay, regular popsicles, outside bars. Um, and Snickers and Twix ice cream bars. Snickers, those are so good. Okay, go ahead and pick what you want. You're welcome. I know these are bomb. I covered the thing and then I was like the child, so I covered the bomb. Wait, I don't get it though. If I'm the youngest of two, why am I second? Because you're the youngest, you're the second. You're the second, not the youngest. Not the second. I'm second. Yeah, bro, that, was, that wasn't an mm -hmm. idea. So she was like, can you bring me? Whichever one you want. I tried to bring one that was, like, friendly to yeah, I was going to say, sometimes dairy doesn't look exactly. like back. Yeah, so dairy. I'm going to be going to sit back. Okay, what do you guys, we have, you guys can come up and get yours, too. Outshine, Twix, or Snickers bars. The Outshine flavors are tangerine, raspberry, and strawberry. Are they both ice cream? Yeah. Which one's better? Oops. It's just Snickers. I don't know. That's Snickers. Snickers. Can you give me some? Yep. It is a lot, but you know what? It was delicious. Yep. I hope they're still frozen. They're in like an ice thing, so. Okay. Yeah, let's rearrange the desks back to where they were. So like the side ones and, yeah. Five minutes. <laughs> She's too competitive for this. Okay, so with your little group, I know we moved our desks, but um, yeah, we'll do it with the group. So with your group, just discuss the following really fast. So what benefits come from cooperative learning? What are the downsides of cooperative learning? And how can teachers implement this into their daily lessons? So go ahead and talk with your group about these three things really fast. Thank you. 
Okay, I know that wasn't a bunch of time, but we're going to hurry and just discuss them really fast. So we're just going to do one answer for each. So what benefits come from cooperative learning? Yep. You get to like know the people you're working with better. It makes the task more fun and easy, I guess. Yeah, and the connection gets stronger with the class. Do you want to answer the second one? Oh, I was going to <laughs> OK, quick. Sorry, um, we don't have a lot of time. Oh, sorry. It's OK. I was going to say, can we learn like life lessons, so, like teamwork and mm -hmm. like, communication? Yeah, for sure. OK. The, what are the downsides of cooperative learning? Okay. Yeah, Lucy. Some kids are kind of sensitive, or they might be sad if they lose, or, or Emily was saying if they don't participate, then it ruins the whole thing. That's true. It's not always, cooperative learning isn't always com, com, competition, though. And you can't make a student be cooperative. Yeah, so you can't make them work with other people. They just won't have it. Sometimes they just won't yeah. Have it. How can teachers implement this into their daily lessons? Just to work with other students. Yeah, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say just like discussing stuff with their partners. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then just this one is just differentiated instruction. So this is just um, using different types to kind of go to the needs of your students. So differentiated just means that you use all of them instead of just one, which is what most teachers do. And that is the main goal is to try and implement all of them because some things might work for some and might work for others. So um, we'll just do one of these. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> Okay, who wants to read this really fast for us? Yeah, Ains, go ahead. Mrs. Applebottom notices that her kids chat with each other that her kids chat oh my gosh, with each other a lot during her lessons. She has um, tried a lot of different solutions, but they continue to do, be disruptive how she's teaching or during independent time. Um, which learner centered strategy could help her in better educating her students and help her keep them? Anyone have any ideas? The strategies are right here. Yeah. Guided discovery, because then that way the students can like bounce off each other's ideas, but still get to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the yeah cooperative learning because then they get to talk, but they're also like doing the assignment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's lots of different solutions to this one, but just the main thing is to focus on the students and how you can adapt to their needs rather than just what you want to do. Uh, either of those would work for this situation. So we're going to skip the second one. And this is just called problem-based instruction, what we just did. We took a problem. And through using the problem, you learned like reinforcing our material that we learned today. So that was just an example of how you can use that in your lesson. And then we're just going to think about this one instead of writing it down. Um, this was kind of just the random topic that was thrown in mind, but more just looking at the big picture of teaching and that you need to teach them a lot of different things rather than just your subject, like social skills, even moral principles in a way. There's obviously a line to that, which we've talked about. Um, and obviously ap academic skills, which is kind of a given because that's what you're there to teach for. Uh, so just think about what things that you value most that aren't specifically your curriculum that you want to teach in your lessons and how you can implement those. And those are just extra. Yep, that's it. Thank you.
Also, if anyone wants an outshine, go for it, because there's a lot of these. Yeah. There's strawberry, tangerine, raspberry. Yeah, me neither. I think that one's raspberry. Thank you. I do. Don't tangerine There are like five of them. No, are there only two like flavors? There's three. Strawberry, raspberry, and tangerine. I think this one's ras. The dark ones are raspberry. That's strawberry. I didn't take your tangerine. I took your tangerine. <laughs> mm, wait, which one's strawberry? Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm not even done with my first one and I'm stressed. Do you want one? No, I'm okay. okay. Do you want one? I'm alright. Right. No, thanks. Oh, do you want Yep. Solid. Yeah. Solid. No, straight up. Oh my she loves to hate all of us. Yeah. 